fire through the flood through the valley through the mud I won't work I won't fear cause no And do 
attack against my family.
We might shouldn't have started with that one. It won't. It won't that thing will stick you right there. In. I want you to think of all the things that the enemy is trying to throw your way. I want you to get that on your mind. I can't leave that alone until you get those things on your mind and say, It won't. It won't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for coming into our lives and changing everything that's not like you. God, we surrender on this morning. Do what you need to do. Cleanse us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, let us not harden our heart as we receive this word on this morning from your manservant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remnant Church, we are closing our series entitled A Matter of the Heart. I pray that God has spoken to your heart. I pray that God has moved on your heart. And so as we close this series, I want to ask you a question. The question is, how is your heart? I want you to think about that for a minute. How is your heart? How are things going with your heart? A lot of times people ask you, you know, how are you doing? But I want to ask you, how is your heart doing? Lydia, how is your heart? Rhonda, how is your heart? Janet, how is your heart? Montreal, how is your heart? Joe, how is your heart? Brandy, how is your heart? Think about that. How is your heart? Because, you know, a lot of times people ask you, you know, how is your family doing? 
How's the new baby doing? How are things going on the job? But today I want to know one, I want to know a question. I want to ask you one question. How is your heart? And as I study my word, you know, my daughters, they come in and out of the office and hug on me and kiss on me. And um, they say two, and, 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 and they'll say a word or two, and then they go back and forth. So uh, Kenley, my oldest daughter, she came in, she looked at the computer, seen what I was studying, what I was writing up for the sermon. So Ken, Kenley came in, looked at my computer and said, I know about the heart, daddy. Right. She then said, my heart beats a thousand times a day. She then said, my heart helps me live and breathe. Kelsey then said, you know, Kelsey can't, get, get, can't let Kenley get all the signs. So Kelsey jumped in and said, Dad, I know something about my heart. She said, raspberries are good for my heart. And then she laughed. She ain't nothing but a little jokester. But I want, what I want to let you know as we close this series, the heart is so important. And, and the title for this, for this message today is My Heart. You know, the Spanish people say corazón, mi corazón. The heart is so important. Life can be hard on the heart. We all go through certain experiences in life that can wear the heart down. Some of us live a tough life. If we go ahead and keep it 100 this morning, life ain't been no crystal stuff. You know, my sister said that poem coming up. Some of us live a hard life. And a rough life, and a, that rough life has caused our heart to take a beating. The world is full of outside influences that have the power to disrupt the rhythm of our heart. Over time, we develop habits that slowly eat away our heart sensitivity. The pain and disappointment that we've experienced in life has caused us to set up walls around our heart. And now the heart is out of sync with the rhythm it was created to maintain. And now we're meaner than a junkyard dog. Just mean for no reason. You know, coming up, our parents always taught us to protect one another. They taught us to mind our manners, respect your elders. No one ever taught or said to us what the scripture said, which is guard your heart. And while we're there, let's turn to Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. That's our scripture for today. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. And I want to read the NIV version. This is what it says in Proverbs four and 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. Why did you do that? Because your heart flew, flowed from it. Why did you treat that person like that? Because your heart flowed from it. Everything you do flows from your heart. Why did you give to that person? Because your heart flowed from it. Why did you forgive that person? Because your heart flowed from it. Everything we do. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Above all else, meaning if you don't do nothing else, guard your heart. Protect your heart. Defend your heart. Because if you allow the wrong thing to get inside of your heart, man, we're going to have to do damage control. If you leave your heart wide open, unguarded, the way you live, your flow of life ain't going to be flowing right. Something's going to be off. Above all else, guard your heart. I don't care what you do, Remnant Church. Guard your heart. I know you're guarding your money, but guard your heart. I know you're guarding your car and material things, but guard your heart. I know you got that nice big safe on that money and that jewelry, but guard your heart. I know you got a gun with you everywhere you go. You guard your life, but guard your heart. I know you love your mom and your children. You do a great job of protecting them, but guard your heart. I know you got uh, a nice house and cars. And look, you got those fancy, nice alarms all on it. You got cameras everywhere. You guarding your, 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 your items, your material things. You're guarding it, but guard your heart. This heart carries a lot of stuff. 
We learned earlier this month that the heart was meant for Jesus dwelling. That's where he want to rest at. Your heart is where God want to chill at. But if we have so much stuff there, who wants to live in a junkie house? Who wants to live where it's cluttered and chaos? I remember when I used to get high. My mom used to always tell me, God don't want to get high with you. How is God going to rest in you if you're always high? How can God rest in an unclean, clean place? How can God rest where there's unforgiveness? How can God rest where there's so much hate? We hold so much garbage in our hearts to the point that it's cluttered. I'm telling you today, God needs a clean place to dwell in. One thing about the heart, you can't hide it. I, I don't care how much you try to fake the phone, how much you try to flex front. You cannot hide what's in your heart. We think we can hide our issues. We think we can hide what we're going through. We think we can hide how we feel about a person. So we act fake and phony. We act like they're our dogs and homeboys, but really they ain't. We act like we like that young lady, but we really can't stand her. There is no way a person can speak good if they are evil. Eventually, the real you going to show up. Let me show you. Right there in Matthew 12, the Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Bible says that everything that we do flows from our heart. So, 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 so out of the abundance, the mouth speaks. So how, you can't you can't speak good of evil in your heart because whatever's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. It's going to come out. Some of us put on like we like a person knowing we can't stand them. Some of us act saved at church. But as soon as we leave that building, oh, my God, we cursing. We getting drunk. We getting high. We sleeping with this one and that one. We faking. Not all of us. But most of us, we ain't living nothing. We're not living what we say we're living. We lying, just lying. All this pretending is going to cause a problem. Because when we pretend, it allows you to ignore the true condition of your heart. As long as you say the right things and do the right thing, you're tempted to believe that all is well. You think because you speak nice. You think because you know how to put on a front when you're in front of church folk. You think because you know how to throw on a suit and tie, people are going to think that you're walking that lifestyle. You're not fooling anybody but yourself because after a while, the real you is going to show up. Because there's going to come a time when your public performance is going to stop. And someone is going to provoke you to the point that the real you is going to pull up on the scene. So, because of religion, religion has taught you that you only got to be saved on, on, on Sunday. You only got to be saved when you're around church folk. You only got to be saved when you're in that building. Then you go home and be a devil. Yeah. See, your spouse knows the real you. Your children know the real you. You can fake all you want with us. But God knows your heart. He knows you ain't living nothing. And one day. That performance will stop and eventually the real you going to show up. The real you will outpace your attempts to monitor and modify everything you do and say. Glory be to God. Now, the unresolved issue that have been stirring around undetected in your heart will eventually work their way to the surface. Whatever's going on in that heart is going to bubble up to the top. It's going to surface. It's going to come up. The real you is going to enter the building. The real you will begin to show its actions. The real you will begin to show your character and it's going to show up in your relationships. If your heart continues to go unmonitored, if your heart continues to go unchecked, whatever thing is growing in there is going to worsen until the point that you're no longer able to contain it. You're going to be no longer able to contain it with carefully managed words and behavior. Some of you already notice things beginning to slip a bit. Maybe you've been able to control your anger, but lately you got a chip on your shoulder. Lately, you've been on edge. My like, God, what's wrong with me? Now, every now and then, now every now and then, you having these little outbursts. Some see their, 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 their co-workers getting a raise. You know you should be happy for your co-worker getting that raise. You know you should be happy for Joe and his promotion. 
But for some reason, you're a little salty about that. You and your feelings that your coworker got that raise, got that promotion. Your friend just got blessed. You know, you know you should be happy for your friend. But deep inside, you mad. You thought it should have been you that got that blessing. What happened was your friend or your coworker represents that person from your past who bought something or won something or was given something you wanted and now you find yourself resenting that person for it. Guard your heart. I say guard your heart. Just like a heart attack has the potential to destroy our bodies, so does a spiritual heart disease. A spiritual heart disease has the potential to destroy and squeeze the life out of your most valuable relationships. It's a matter of the heart. Some of us know where our heart has a blockage. For those who don't, God's truth will lead us right to it. God's truth is a GPS to the blockage that's in our hearts. Once the problem is located, the solution becomes obvious. Most of the time, we just too stubborn to do what we need to do to stop the heart from hurting, stop the heart from leaking and being off rhythm. We would rather remain sick and in bondage. We would rather leave our hearts unguarded rather than fix the issue. We rather mess the flow of our lives up instead of receiving healing. Most of the time, the solution is simple. Some of us see people we know, they look good in their outfits. But you ain't going to let them know it. You rather keep your mouth closed than give a person a compliment. Why? What are we mad and salty about? It bothers some of us to see people living good and looking good. We know it shouldn't bother us, but it does. But we walk around like everything is okay. But it's not. There are symptoms of a deeper struggle. Your heart is under attack and it could mean that you are losing. Losing because of neglect. Because no one ever taught us to guard and to protect our heart. Nobody ever taught us that. You know when someone is having an internal battle because they say things like this, man, you know what? I can't believe I just said that. Next day we wake up, we were mad the night before, the next day we wake up, you know what, man? I don't know where that came from. I don't know why I said that to you. That's not like me. Man, you know what? I just lost it. I remember when my grandmother, Lilla Brown, a.k.a. Pee Wee, I remember when she had to have heart surgery. And you know, Cardiologists use a procedure called arteriogram. And they use this arteriogram to diagnose the health of a person's heart. An arteriogram is an x-ray of the arteries that's taken after a dye is injected into the bloodstream. The dye allows doctors to kind of pinpoint where a blockage is in the arteries. Follow me here, I'm going somewhere. If blockage is discovered, a skilled cardiologist will be able to insert a stent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandma had to get some stents. A skilled cardiologist will be able to insert a stent through an artery in the patient's leg and run it up to the heart and open the blood vessels so that blood can again flow freely to the blockage or damaged area. But apart from an arteriogram, a life-threatening heart issue can go undetected for years. A person with blockage will experience some symptoms. You'll know if you're having a blockage because you're going to have some symptoms. But these symptoms may not seem to be directly associated with the heart. And right now, a lot of us, we have a spiritual heart issue and we have some symptoms. And for whatever reason, those symptoms does not connect to the heart. And so we think we're just fine. Here's some of those symptoms right here. And you know what's interesting? This spirit, it doesn't change because it's the same symptoms that we talked about on the week, uh, uh, two weeks ago. Some of those, some of us, we got back pain. Some of us, we can't sleep at night. Some of us, we got anxiety. Some of us, we have loss of appetite, indigestion, nausea, vision change, loss of memory. This is the problem, Remnant Church. Just like the doctors, they treat all of 
showed those symptoms, but they never get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is the heart. So what happens in the natural? The same thing happens spiritually. A spiritual heart attack. Just as a heart attack has the potential to destroy our bodies, so too does the spiritual heart disease. It will squeeze the life out of your most valuable relationships. What's the solution, Pastor? Write it down, because I'm glad you asked. Just like the dye used in the arteriogram, truth. Truth can help us pinpoint where that blockage is in our spiritual condition. If we can be truthful, we will look up and our relationships, our character and our faith will be destroyed. If we can't speak truth, excuse me, if we can't speak truthful, we're going to look up our relationships, our faith and our character is going to be destroyed. So we have to walk in truth. Now you're walking around talking about, you know, uh, 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 um, Cause when we don't walk in truth, you're gonna walk around talking about some, oh, I ain't don't nobody wanna help me. I ain't got nobody. I don't have no support system. Well, you ran everybody away with your raunchy attitude. The next thing we must do is we gotta deal with the root. So one, we gotta walk in truth. Number two, we gotta deal with the root of the problem. Yeah. I remember living in the country, and um Lady Charles and I had this big old pecan tree right in the front yard. And every time we would pull up in the driveway, you just hear us running over pecans. And I'm not talking about 1, 10, 20 pecans. I'm talking about an abundance of pecans. We just running them over. Right now to fix this problem, we could easily call her daddy because he loves to pick up pecans. That's his side hustle. We could have easily called him and say, hey, daddy, come get these pecans out of the yard. Or we could have got a bucket, a, pe a bucket and put our pecans in there, which we've done. Right. We did that from time to time, but it never fixed the problem. Yeah, that solved the problem maybe for some weeks, maybe for that season. But when the next season came, the same problem was still there. So we needed a more permanent solution. And that is exactly what we do with our heart problems. We pick up temporary solutions, right? We keep apologizing for coming home drunk. We keep apologizing for showing out in front of company, right? Cursing one another out in public. We keep apologizing for cheating and sneaking in people DM and now we got caught. We keep apologizing for gambling away all the bill money, gambling away the money that's supposed to buy the kids school clothes. We swear on a stack of Bibles that we will never do it again. But as time passes, we repeat the same mistakes. And here we are once again, dealing with you and your issues. See, the temporary fix was to just beg for forgiveness, say, I won't do it no more. Yeah. And if you don't like the fruit that keeps cluttering up your front yard, the only real solution is to dig up the tree by the roots and eliminate the issue once and for all. If we deal with the source, we have dealt with the problem. Now, let's be honest, we should know that if we have a pecan tree, that we should expect to step on a few pecans here and there. In each case, we know that the, that, the, the, the source and we know the, uh, what has to be done to get rid of a needless fruit. So tell me this. What is the source of all the inappropriate behaviors and hurtful words that litter the ground around you? What is the source of all the bad behaviors? And things that you do. What's the source? What's the source of your inappropriate behaviors in relationships? What's the source of you not being able to get close to a person and hold a great relationship? You never want to get close to anyone. Is it because you don't want to be hurt again? What's the source that every time you find a good man or a good woman, you find a way to mess it up because you are afraid? Whatever is in your heart is going to come out. Whatever is in your heart is going to show above all else. Guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Solution one was run to the two, run, run to the truth. Solution number two was to deal with the root 
Solution number three is we got to repent. There are some things that we have gone through and we have held those things in our heart hostage for years. And now over time, years after years, we have the symptoms of a blocked artery. It's showing in our health, but we're ignoring it. Some of us have back pain. Some of us have a hard time sleeping, right? You don't got to say, man, God already showed it to me. Ain't nobody telling, telling me your business or nothing like that. You're walking around with anxiety and indigestion. It's nothing that you ate. But we must repent, we must forgive, and then walk in love. Until you forgive and let that thing go, your heart will be affected and there will be no place for God to dwell. God wants to spend time with you, but he has no place to come by. You kicked him out. It's another man that has taken his place in that dwelling. If you truly, truly want Jesus to dwell in your clean heart, you need to run to the truth. You need to deal with the root of the problem and you need to repent. So here's your chance now. The doors of my father's house is open. Will you repent? Will you run to the truth? Will you deal with the root of the problem and stop doing temporary problems? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. God, we repent now for holding things in our heart. Cleanse us now with your blood. God, we forgive anyone that has done us wrong, anyone that has trespassed against us. And God, we lay it all at your feet now. Free us now today. God, we repent of any sin that we've committed and we lay our life on the line for you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Continue to walk with a clean heart so that God can dwell there. God bless you and amen. It's now time for our tithe and offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every giver, for every seed sower. We thank you for every believer in your word. Bless now these tithes and offering. God, give an increase. Give an increase to those who are willing to give sacrificially, consistently to your kingdom. And God, continue to give us the vision for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and I love you.